All right. Well, I will call to order the February 2022 meeting of Community Television of Santa Cruz County. Um, 5 p.m., 5.02 p.m. I guess Secretary, call the roll. Yes. Uh, Director Maziars. Here. Director Granados. Here. Uh, Director Gudger. Here. Director Hall. Here. Director O'Driscoll. Here. Director Rand. Director Shaw. Here. Director Warren. Here. Chair Lanier. I'm here. Great. All right, thank you. Uh, number two, oral communications. Any person may address the board during its oral communications period. All oral communications must be directed to an item not listed on today's consent or regular agenda and must be within the jurisdiction of the board. And I will note that that's any person. So that can be um, one of us as well, if, if there is somebody. Any oral communications? Seeing none, I'll move on to number three, consideration of late additions to the agenda, additions and deletions to the consent or and regular agendas. And seeing none, we will move on to the consent agenda. We have approved meeting agenda, approved board meeting minutes of January 24, 2022, and approved the finance committee recommendation to accept the January 22 financial reports. Any questions, comments, corrections, additions? I'll, I will. I'll move the consent agenda. And after the second, I have a quick comment on item number six, the finance committee recommendation. Okay, we have a motion uh, looking for a second. I'll second. And the, the only comment I have is you'll notice that the uh, we're not renting the space as fast as we thought in the uh, satellite facility. We discussed that at the finance committee. Becca gave us a report as to what's going on. And I just wanted to assure you the finance committee is keeping an eye on that. Uh, we have a lot of things to talk about at this meeting, so I won't say anything more, but I just wanted to mention that. That's probably the only point on that report that I thought should be highlighted. And um, that's really my comment. Thank you. Great, thank you, Director Hall. Well, we have a motion uh, from Director Hall and a second from Director Gudger to approve. Um, can we just have a voice vote on this, I think? Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, that is approved. We'll move on to the regular agenda. Uh, we'll start out with the executive director's report, Becca. Hi, okay. Well, great to see you all. It, this is my report for January and um, uh, in January, we were searching for a new video technician, and I can, I will, um, spoiler alert for the next report, we found one, and uh, we're real happy with him. He seems to be catching on very quickly, and uh, Victor is still training him, but he's really happy with him, so we've, we've got our man. Uh, revenue at the end of January, CTV was through 58% of the year. And uh, we had earned 54% of our budget. So we're about 4% under this year, but we believe we can make that up. And um, we've only spent 53% of our projected operating budget. So our expenses are below our revenue. We, we try to manage that as we go along. Um, the EIDL loan was approved and funded and received the funds in January, Mayor in our bank. Yay. I know, it's so fun. Um, we, uh, under paid services, um, more revenue, we uh, did 16 government meetings and webinars in January, and we produced a special webinar for the county health department. They do a, they do um, press release. They only send, or a press conference on Zoom. They only send the link to the press, and then we record it, and then we put it on television so everybody gets to see it. And um, we did one of those in uh, January, and we have coming up a, um, uh, it's a conference about salmon, 
that um, is, uh, a, was they thought they wanted to do a streaming event, but even at our prices, it was too expensive for them. So we are covering a number of breakout sessions for them. We're packaging them and putting them online. So that's a nice um, extra. Sorry, sorry, there's some noise. Yeah, yeah some noise microphone. Oh, I know, it's my paper. Oh. I usually read it on the computer, but I, I'm sorry. So um, that's a nice production for us. And uh, that'll bring our, our uh, production line up. It usually doesn't go up until the end of the year. It always sits there and it always looks like, oh, no, we're never going to make it. But uh, we always do. Under facilities and equipment, um, we're installing um, the, uh, all of our cable cast equipment to, to do our televising from our, from our um, uh, own building. It's going in the server room. We just had the air conditioner fixed because it was getting pretty hot in there. And uh, all, all of the gear is there and it's in a rack, but apparently it's the wrong rack. They sent us the wrong thing. But so we will be switching out uh, before, um, you know, when, it's, when we have all of the, uh, our other ducks in a row, we'll switch that out. But I sent you a picture, I think, so you can see what it looks like in there. And that's where Victor will be able to run all of our telecasts from. And um, it is, uh, it's very exciting to see it all come together. Um, Comcast has confirmed our, the fiber line between our building and, um, and the county building. But what we, they have to, um, they it took a long time for them to do this thing is the survey for them to go out and see if it's really there. They know it's there, but they wanna go out and take a look with their physical eyes. And they've done that. And the next thing they have to do is put together a transport plan and they are working on that. And we kind of just have to wait until they finish it. Once they finish that, um, there'll be equipment we'll need to order to do the transportation. And uh, we, but we don't know what kind until they finish the plan. So we're kind of on hold there. The, in the studio, we built a permanent 24 foot green screen with a cove, which is very exciting. So um, now there's a, it's very nice. It's all lit and it's great for, for producers. It's all one long piece. So they don't have to deal with the breakups in the old panel system. And um, so we're very happy about that. And in the outreach column in January, we um, gave the County Office of Education two PADCaster kits, and they, they have a seven phase plan for them. And uh, right now they are figuring out how they work and creating a, uh, a, a tutorial for teachers so they can understand how to use them. And then they will be creating some curriculum to be used in classrooms that uh, will be um, open source, it, it, it's public domain, anyone can use that curriculum. And so that's really gonna be helpful to us because um, a lot of times we have worked with different organizations and they really haven't known how to teach this. So that'll be helpful in the future. And, um, but- uh, Hold on, Becca, can you hold on for just a sec? We're gonna try to get um, Matilda on there. Oh. Um, Matilda, yeah, can you yeah I think so. Well, I, I can't promote her, but I think. Uh, oh, I can. can you back? Yeah, she's on as an attendee. She's on as a panelist. I don't know why. Um, attendee. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Got her. Okay, we will promote her. Could be promoted. Yep, Matilda Rand will be rejoining as a panelist. Great. Okay. You've so, been promoted, Matilda. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, There's a salary increase, right? Yeah. <laughs> In fact, it's double. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so that's my report. And um, I'm uh, looking for, um, I'm going to, uh, well, Elizabeth is probably here somewhere. We'll be able to connect up with the county office this month and see uh, if they've gotten the teachers involved yet. They had the first step was to recruit three teachers. So we'll, um, we'll know next month if they've been able to do that. Great, thanks. Any comments or discussion from um, folks, Matreya? Uh, just, just two things, Becca. Uh, well, first thing is I'm, I'm impressed that the it looks like a half rack that that all the equipment fits. That you can fit a TV, well, three TV stations in a half rack now. Kind of <laughs> reminds me when I started at the county, the the mainframe was like the size of a full size refrigerator, oh, yeah, and then refrigerator, <laughs> and, and that it used to take up the whole room, and then and then we 
went down to like a dorm room size refrigerator. So maybe the next studio will fit in like, you know, the cell phone <laughs> size. Fit in your pocket. <laughs> right, exactly. But uh, that's, uh, yeah, very exciting that the equipment's there. And yeah. um, then uh, the other, I, I guess I could have mentioned it in the, uh, during the consent agenda, but I was just curious. I'm always curious uh, now that I'm not on the finance committee, the, the, the money for the capital, you know, the, the equipment facilities uh, improvements, you know, was that for the uh, air conditioning repair that uh, last month or in January? Just curious. No, uh, that that repair just happened. Um, okay. We bought we're we've been buying equipment to go in that room. So that's probably what you saw. OK, great. Awesome. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Joe. Uh, you're muted, bud. Mute. I heard all the scratching. I didn't want to be one of the scratchers. <laughs> so uh, I was just sad to see that our signs getting vandalized. And I know we're having so much vandalism in the area. Could you keep us up to date if that happens? Because we may need to have some kind of other sign there if we keep spending money on a sign that somebody's vandalizing. Go ahead. Well, we just got it fixed today. Okay. And, um, you know, I got that new security company just basically as a test to see how well they would do. And it's just watching the uh, the um, the backyard and the uh, uh, storage unit that we have back there. And they've been great. They've been perfect. They have they have scared away many people. And I'm working with the landlord now to use this system all over. So we'd be placing okay. cameras out front and we'll see the sign. And if anyone's there, they are just it's a it's a great system they just open a microphone and say um you in the black hat we see you there you can't be here you need to move along this is a private property and they go okay thank you any other comments or questions great thanks becca uh we'll move on to number nine education committee report um david or and or keith sure <clears throat> um Basically, we're making progress uh, in towards uh, interviewing people for education spotlight. We also, um, uh, uh, regarding that, why Jason Borgen from County Office of Ed um, is has agreed to be interviewed, which we're really pleased with. Uh, he gives us a whole lot of uh, ed tech background, and uh, we we have many questions for him. Uh, also, um, we've gotten uh, OKs for interviews from Rachel Goodman, um, a journalism instructor at Cabrillo, and uh, look forward to talking with her. She'd like to do it in the studio, but that may have to wait, I guess, until March, the middle of March or so. And um, also, uh, Rachel Goodman has agreed um, and as well, I just got confirmation to this morning that um, Adela uh, Naharo has agreed for an interview too uh, in talking about uh, equity and uh, what's going on with students at Cabrillo. So, um, and Keith gave us a report on the library animation project and moving to a new library. Um, we also discussed ways for youth to read their poetry on video, and Christina might be able to pipe in here and talk about the poetry journal. Um, anyway, yeah. we're, we're preparing these to interview these people, and Christina, why don't you add, jump in? Sure, I actually have a quick update, and I have to give all credit to Keith because he's the genius that figured out how to potentially make this work. But Journal X is something that Watsonville is really proud of. It's um, a, a, the first Latinx sort of poetry journal, and it's printed, and the copies are available for um, of the journal in the library in case you guys want any and are around Watsonville Library. But they're really lovely. Basically, what happens with Journal X is that Cabrillo students curate, so they pick um poets from all over actually the world and a few of them some of them are community local Watsonvillian poets but some of them are actually published authors and prominent in Latin America for example um, that said they're really curating they're not necessarily poets themselves they're in the production process and as part of that production process Keith 
Um, I couldn't quite come up with a way of squaring things with journal X leadership because they're just so overwhelmed. But Keith suggested that perhaps one thing that we could do would be once the students select, select the poet, um, maybe they could do an introduction and we could have the poets read the poems out loud, recording them, and then Keith kindly offered to edit it to then make it a program. And I spoke today to the professor. She's going to talk to her students tomorrow when they have class to gauge interest and in her hope is that they too will want to do this because she's in, um, if they're in. And then the idea would be that students would talk about their experience doing journal X and why they picked the poets. And then hopefully the poets would either, and this is the part that I'm sorry, Keith, I wanted to talk to, probably should probably talk to David and Keith a little bit more about in the subcommittee and not um, overshare with you guys, but we'll try to decide whether or not it makes sense to invite the poets. Um, to come to the studio once the studio is open because they're planning a live event on May 6th, hopefully hope, barring any you know major surges, or if we just don't want to have them recorded on their phone. I don't know that piece yet, but the professor is interested and that's a big step because she's been basically in tears every time I've asked anything like I can't handle anything more. So that's great. And then Keith, thank you for your idea and Hopefully we'll get a yes from the students tomorrow and I'll be able to talk this through with the subcommittee in the next meeting. Great, well, thank you, Christina. And finally, um, Brad Kava, who is the journalism department chair has agreed to, um, or would like the loan of uh, a podcaster system. Uh, and we need to work out an agreement with, with him uh, as to how it's being used and uh, and work with the grant committee around that. And that's all. Great. Any comments, questions? I, I'm sorry, I skipped the volunteer um, committee report and went straight to education. So we will rewind back to item number eight. Um, Keith. But just briefly, I included in the packet is the email I sent to all the producers, just saying that we're gonna wait till March 16th to decide we wanted to wait uh, and see after dropping the mass mandate, if there was another surge before we uh, agreed to open the studio. Um, and Guy included uh, the documents that are required of the producer and the studio supervisor when they're using the studio. And then there's a picture in there of the finished green screen. Becca had a nice picture of it when it was mudded and taped by the uh, drywallers. <laughs> I managed to sneak in there and get a picture after it was painted, so. <laughs> um, Great. I've been contacted by a couple of producers. They want to get back. So great. That's that's the status. Excellent. Okay. Um, Sorry, Chair. I, I just had yeah. a brief comment. Um, you know, on uh, well, on the previous item, but uh, I just you know, uh, I'm sure Keith has before. I crewed on uh, Jim Russo's Central Coast Poetry show a couple times and Jim passed. I, I don't know if we announced it at a meeting, but uh, I think we did. He passed away last year. So I'm sure he would be thrilled that we are um, keeping poetry uh, reading on the air alive. Um, so and and it's great that we're including youth. You know, he tended to have, you know, more mature you know, all ages, but not so much youth um, poets. So um, I'm really excited about the prospect of us getting um, some youth poetry on the air. Yeah, Becca. Um, uh, when um, Mr. Russo did his show, he posted it on Facebook as well. And he got tons of poets from around the world asking to be on his uh, show. Uh, so I think for, for um, I don't know, Christina will know better than me whether uh, today's youth likes Facebook, but they might be able to, um, um, break up their their uh, poems and post them individually on social media and attract attention as well from poets. So two quick things. First of all, thank you for saying that. Keith did share the legacy, so that made my heart really happy. And um, just to clarify, so the students, Journal X is completely curated and led by students and students do all of the selection and students would be talking about their experience doing that and why they selected the poets. But the poet themselves, some of them may be youth, but they're actually, they, some of them are more mature. And um, no longer being a youth, Becca, I'm actually not sure. If cool, well, I wouldn't be able to say authoritatively that they're not on Facebook, but if my cousins are typically believed, no, 
they are not there. They barely consider Instagram cool anymore. So unfortunately, I know not a lot I of Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is the land of old people now. I think. I I just saw in the news today that TikTok increased their limit to ten minutes. So that's enough for a pretty yeah they you know, do it serious yeah. serious length poem. You know. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I would just Wait, like they, to point out that the Matilda directed Jim's show, basically co-produced his show. Um, and Jim's show is what inspired me to suggest this to Christina. Oh, great. So cool. Well, thank you all. Um, I have nothing to report, board chair report. Um, we'll move on to item number 11. Any board member or staff request for specific items to appear on next meeting agenda? Seeing none, and any announcements? So at this point, I guess I will announce that we will go into closed session. Let's Wait, stay on. Did, Keith, didn't you, you already mentioned uh, the library animation project is happening again, right? Starting this Saturday. Starting this Saturday. And uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, if uh, Matilda and you and, and I can get together to see what's going on some afternoon this week, let's do it. All right. Um, okay, so at this point, we will uh, segue, stay in this room, but we'll segue into um, a closed session. So I guess, um, Becca, you can stop the recording and 